I don't think we've done nearly enough NBA content, right? Because every NBA show has to have a segment about LeBron James and how amazing he is. Yeah. Get those numbers up, right? Yeah. So here's an interesting thing, though, because mm -hmm. you got LeBron, mm -hmm. who's starting his 21st season. Mm -hmm. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have Victor Wembanyama, who's perhaps the most heralded number one overall pick since LeBron. And he's 19 years old, so he's literally younger than LeBron's NBA career. And both of these guys are going to be playing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Victor's not going to be as great as he once be, will be one day. Mm -hmm. LeBron isn't as great as he once was. But yet they're still going to be really, 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 really good players. Right? right. At least we hope so, right? First and foremost, how does that strike you? Like that, that dichotomy of not like, oh, yeah, he's old and he's young. Like, no, I've literally been playing this game longer than you've been alive, son. I think it strikes me as evidence of LeBron's, obviously he's a great player. Obviously he is an unbelievable physical specimen, an alien, sort of like Wembenyama, except Wembenyama is a different, skinny alien. Yeah, a right. different type of alien, yeah. but alien nonetheless. And so I think that for LeBron at this point, it's, it's almost like what is he proving? Or what is he, he's sort of proving that he can still do it. And he wants to play with at, his son. At the highest level. At the highest right. level. And he can. Because he's not just hanging on here. No, no, he's no. He's legitimately one of the, like, 20 best players in the game. Right. Like we said, I think a few, I don't know, in the multiverse, at some point you were like, it's not, if the Lakers make it far, mm -hmm. no one's going to be like, oh, well, it was because of Anthony Davis. Right. It'll be because of LeBron. I think I said that next week. You said that next week. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, but I, so to me, it's like you have this guy, Wembenyama, who is the, the our, our best chance at having what a LeBron is. Right. Like there was Jordan and then there's LeBron. It's like, could it be this young French kid? But I think what you're talking about is where they meet in the middle. Right. Are th is this going to be like incredible bat? Like, are they going to play perfectly against each other because they could be closer to each other's levels than they would have been if Wembenyama had come in like 10 years ago. So here's the weird part, right? So Jordan and LeBron never crossed paths. Right. Jordan's last year in the league was 2001, 2000, or excuse me, 2002, 2003. LeBron was drafted in June of 2003, and then 03, 04 is when his career starts. So we never got the overlap there. Although theoretically, I mean, if Jordan could stay healthy and could stay motivated, he could have, they could have crossed paths, right? right? But we don't have that situation here. We, when we don't have a situation where it's an old, broken-down LeBron, kind of toothless and haggard. Where it's, like, just sad. Yeah. It, this it's is, not sad yet. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's not even close to being sad. Right. Like I said, he's still one of the best players. So I, I had, within the, that context, I had this conversation with some friends of mine the other day, and they were like, Victor Wembanyama is going to be the best player ever. Right? What's it going to take for Victor Wembanyama to be the best player ever? I said, well, let me put it this way. LeBron, 21 years playing, he's scored more points than anybody. He's going to be in the top 10 in rebounds and assists and a bunch of statistical categories. He's won four titles. He's been to the finals nine times in a row. He had to do all of that for people to merely accept that he can be in the conversation with Michael Jordan. Right. What the hell does Victor Wembanyama got to do? Uh, more than that? I don't know how you could do more than that. What's different than that, right? Like, because, like, we said, oh, you got to go 6-0 and in the finals. Well, LeBron made the finals in those seven and lost. It's like, oh, 6-0 is out the, out the door. So what can you do that's not that? Well, I'll just be to the finals more times than Michael ever did. Right. Uh, I'll go to the finals at an incredibly high percentage for my career, and I will break every statistical record. And do it on teams that should not necessarily be there if he weren't on them. And do it with three different teams, yeah. right? Like, he's won three finals MVPs on three different, no one's ever done that before. Right. So it's like, I can't do what Michael did, so I gotta do it differently. And this is the different he did. The problem is the different he did was check every goddamn box there is. Mm -hmm. So what is the different that Victor Wembanyama can do? Can he go six and zero in the finals? I don't know if he can do that. I guess that's the, that's the one that's in play for him right now. Yeah. I Yes. Also, though, I think it becomes so much more a conversation about how we measure greatness, how we talk about these guys and have to choose who's better than whom. And right. I think it's this ideal of, like, wouldn't it be great to have someone who is – who at this point, the only way Wembenyama could be better than either Jordan or LeBron 
would be to do so much more than they did, would be to win eight finals in a row, right. would be to go to 13 finals in a row, would be to win MVP on five different teams. And these measurements that we use start to, it, it start to, the whole argument sort of starts to bottom out. Because it's like, well, this is what sports media is built on. Who is greater than right. whom? And how can you measure that? And it's almost like Wembenyama could be the test where it's like, how, well, the system broke. Like, we don't know. Right. The, the interesting thing for me is LeBron and Michael both debuted at a time where you could be individually great and your team could stink and everyone could recognize, oh, that guy's, that guy's a great player. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like because of the culture we're in, if Victor Omanyama has a good year, and they go 23 and 59. Yeah. How many people are going to go, oh, it's all garbage, you know? How good can he be? They only won 23 games. Is he going to be afforded the grace that other players, even like current players, you think about Giannis as a rookie. Yeah. Like, will he be afforded that grace of being able to not be spectacular, either individually yeah. or on a team level, to start his career? And can we hold out? long enough for him to grow into that no i don't think i don't think he'll be afforded any of that grace i think the way he can he'll be able to earn it back later if he's then great right. and everybody who said he wasn't in the first season of his career will be like no i always believed it you know it's like you have to i think the way that the media ecosystem has evolved around him mm -hmm. is going to play a huge part in that and it's going to be on him to be like okay, I can't let this, you know, the blinders that people talk about. Well, I mean, that's going to be really hard in a major media market like San Antonio, especially with that team, the way they really love the media and open their doors <laughs> to everything. <Right. laughs> with Pop being like, you know what? You should talk to them. To the Today Show. Let's have them over. Yeah, Savannah. Oh, is it not Savannah anymore? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we are introducing elements that have come from outside of the timeline into the timeline. Yeah. Now. Whoops. Anyone that was else? a joke I made off camera. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, Ankle monitors, perhaps. <sighs> <Anyway>. <laughs> the other side of that spectrum, LeBron James. Yes. When is a drop-off going to happen? Is a drop-off going to It's going to happen. It has to happen. I don't know. It, you know. But it looks so far right now. It looks so far. It also... People are so unimpressed by great people once they've been great for so long. So it feels it feels it feels a little bit like they're both playing a losing game right now. Mm -hmm. When Minyama has come in with the highest expectations anybody has had since LeBron, mm -hmm. LeBron has proved that he has surpassed. in su surpassed those expectations, and yet people are here being like LeBron's eating on the bench, like <laughs> what you know. And so it's like, can either of them like they they. They have so much in common right now because yeah. they're almost both tasked with these impossible tasks, which is to be, to to do, there's no way they can win. How can right. they win the, the conversation right now? Welcome to sports media, right? By the way, what uh, Charlotte's referencing is Michael Cooper, former Laker, yeah. was critical of LeBron because LeBron during the preseason game had himself a little snack on the bench. And what was he, what was the snack? Is that eight? He's munching away. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's hiding behind AD. Oh, okay. oh, oh, okay. No, man, it, it's a, it, like he's—he's he's not even like it's not even like that's. But not, you're telling me that one of the greatest players of all time hasn't earned the right to eat with the utensil let, on the bench during a preseason game. Let me show you right now, like this. Just I want you to pay great attention to him while he's eating. That's not the snacking face. <laughs> oh no, snack. that's a full meal. That's someone who's eating a meal. Is that's he wearing a Red Sox hat. Uh, I think he's a part owner, so that makes sense. Yeah, he is. How do you feel about that? Nah, he got to get take that inside. I thought he was just like, <laughs> like a crackers bar. or something. Like, or yeah, something yeah. something that's designed to eat on the he go. He had soup. If you had, if you had to eat it with a utensil. J.R. JR Smith called him up, and he was like, hey, man, bring some soup on the bench. <laughs> some tortilla. <laughs> yeah, tortilla <laughs> soup. Tortilla soup. Oh, man, you can't be out here with utensils. That's, that's the rule. If you need a utensil to eat it, you need to go in the back. You should not be on the bench. Yeah. Well, so Wembenyama, that's his first hurdle this season. Can he not be eat on the bench with utensils? <laughs>